And both of those events we know are future, which then therefore challenges some of our understandings. And see, this is the whole part, that the whole thing that the Jews, the Jews and the Pharisees did the same thing when the Messiah came. They had their set understanding of the scriptures and, and the prophecies and the way they had it all figured out what was going to, how the Messiah was going to come and what was going to happen. And when Jesus came, he blew all their understandings and expectations just out of the water. And they just could not believe that this guy was the Messiah because he didn't come the way that he th they thought he was going to come. He didn't do what they thought he was going to do. He's supposed to kill, get rid of those Romans and make them guys kings and queens and, and, you know, and set up this worldly kingdom and all the stuff that they expected. And, and, he, and none of that happened. And so they just, well, he can't be the Messiah. And so, no, no, he's the Messiah. You just don't understand. Well, all that mystery and all that misunderstanding surrounded the first coming. So, but but we're going to have a perfect understanding of what happens at the second coming before it happens, right? No. That's not, that's not what I understand Ellen White to say. She said that uh, she said that the Adventist church would not know the time of their visitation. Yeah, because we follow the same pattern. Yeah. Much to learn and much to unlearn. Right. And so if I'm not willing to, to look at the book of Revelation and ask God to lead me to an understanding, and I, I just want to, you know, just hold a party line to something, well, then I, I'm sorry. I, again, I think the, the truth that you're denying is greater than the truth that you're holding on to. And I'm, and, 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 there's no way, and I'm, I'm on record about this, I, I'm not denying any of the truths of the past that we have taught as historical truths. I'm not denying any of those truths. What happened in the Dark Ages, what happened in the early church, all the way that we've studied, that we've taught history, uh, you know, I have no problem with understanding the book of Revelation from a historical perspective. Absolutely not. That's that's fine. And then, and by the way, that's true because it's the eternal gospel. It applies to all time and all space. So I'm not denying that there's partial truth there. I'm just what I'm concerned about is that this idea that the ideas of, of things that we hold on to that we say are truth are actually denying the present truth are right around us and then leaving us blind to what God is doing and to the very things the message of the book of Revelation is trying to prepare the things the book of Revelation is trying to prepare us for. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry to go on and on about some of these things, but I think it's a, it's a real challenge. You know, there's people out there that are trying to get back to what the pioneers teach. And so they're actually going back to Uriah Smith as a pioneer, which, you know, is neither here nor there. But then they're, now they're saying the turkey's the king of the north and the papacy's not the king of the north because Uriah Smith says in Daniel Revelation that turkey's the king of the north. Well, and then they're saying, well, that's what, the founding fathers, the pioneers of the church believed. That's not what the pioneers of this church believed at all. You know, James White wrote very clearly uh, an article that proved that, that Turkey is not the king of the north and that from uh, very quickly from Daniel and the repetitive imagery of Daniel that the papacy is the king of the north and that's the, been the Adventist position from its, from its beginning. So these people are running around saying because there's a, ro a war between Iran and Israel, they want to jump onto this dispensational thing and say that there's an Eastern question about about Islam and that the king of the north is Turkey and and this you know Islam stuff going on is is a sign of the of Daniel 11 being fulfilled. It's like, well, I'm sorry, but that's not that's just not the foundational teaching of Adventism. Then you know that's what Uriah Smith taught, but that's not was not what the founding fathers of our church believed nor taught. And many are being many are being swept into this because of the of the current events that are taking place. And so, you know, there's many things that Uriah Smith taught that are not that are not accurate. And of course, this is why James White wanted to write his own commentary in the book of Revelation. And that's when God told Mrs. White to tell him, no, don't do that. Because God knew that if James White or Alan White wrote a commentary in the book of Revelation, then we would never move beyond it. We'd hold on to that like a sacred cow, like some people are doing to Uriah Smith, and never and never expand our thinking beyond it. And 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 Mrs. White, when she talks about 
uh, Daniel Revelation, she just says, we need to study. We need to study. We don't understand it. That's what she kept telling people. We don't understand the books of Daniel Revelation. We, we, we need to study. You need to study. We don't understand it. Hmm. Well, what, she keeps saying this over and over again. And Uriah Smith had published his books, has published his book on Daniel Revelation 10, 20, 30 years before many of these statements. And she's still telling people we don't understand the book of Daniel Revelation. So obviously what she's saying is the book that Uriah Smith's explanation of Daniel Revelation of explanation of the books of Daniel Revelation is not is not the answer to the question. <coughs> yeah. Even the connecting the Eastern question with Turkey, I mean God always described the directions of the compass in relation to where his people were. And so are God's people in Greece? Is that why Turkey's the, the Eastern question? I mean, no, God's end time people are not in Greece. Right. So. And, to, and to see Turkey as the king of the north, then you have to start thinking that Israel, literal Jews, are now God's people. That's right. Well, excuse me. Well, there you just go right down the dispensational you know slide to no and if you're and if you're looking at a literal country to or a literal group of people to explain the king the king of the north and the king of the south of daniel you've already lost the battle because daniel 11 and daniel 11 the king of the north and the king of the south are are, are mindsets their philosophies are they're, they're universal it's not it's not a local literal it's a it's a principle that applies to 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 people's thinking so, you know, there's a, a whole lot of reasons why these conclusions are just not correct. But these are the these are the things that when you try to present something, as I've been doing in Adventism, you try to present something, you 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 run into these this wall of resistance that you know that you can't be I've literally had people tell me, you know, what you're saying can't be true. And I say, why? Because I never heard it before, so it can't be true. I said, well, wh what about the Bible? How many Bible verses? How much scripture do I get? I, I don't care. I've never heard this before, so it can't be true. So, you know, of course, it's one of those things, I guess, you know, if you if you tell people that Turkey's the king of the north, then they'll love you because, you know, they've heard that from your eyes, Smith, so it must be true. But you tell them something else that they've never heard, and, and they don't even check the Bible to see if it's true. They just They just write you off because it's something they've never heard before. And I know that some of you have run into the same thing. Or I've heard also, well, Sister White didn't say that, or she didn't write about that, so it must not be so. <laughs> Even though multiple times you can have instances where people ask her questions and she says, well, I, the Lord has given me no light about that, so I'm going to not say, I'm going to remain silent. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's so amazing to me. I mean, I mean, you look at the statements she makes, and and the and many of these statements that she she writes about studying the books of Daniel Revelation are, are in the book Testimonies to Ministers. So she's telling the ministers of the Seventh Day Adventist Church that mm -hmm. they need to study the books of Daniel Revelation that they do not understand them. Mm -hmm. Well, and this is in in at the turn of the century. This is 1906, 1907. So these are profound statements, and she's she's not she's writing to the leaders, the, the the supposed to be the thought leaders of the church, the ministers, and she's telling them you need to study the books of Daniel Revelation, and and we become proud thinking that we know them, and we don't. The problem is if you start studying it, you're going to come up with some answers, and when you start sharing those answers, other people are going to get upset with you because. It's not you're seeing something that they didn't they never heard before. You know, we live in strange times. Mm. And strange things are happening. I mean, I never thought that I would I would hear, you know, someone stand up and, and tell me that Turkey's the king of the north. I thought that question was answered a long time ago. I, you know, I never believed that someone would, would stand up and tell me Islam is the king of the South. I never, I never, I never believed that we would go backwards to these local literal things and not miss the, and miss the bigger picture of 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 worldwide mindsets that Satan is trying to do to to to, to convert the whole world. And the idea that we think that that uh, the whole world is going to convert to Islam 
and because that's the king of the south. Well, that's just foolishness. It's me like saying, well, the Buddhism is the king of the south, and everybody's going to convert to Buddhism. Well, you know, where are you getting this stuff from? You know, it's so again, we're not reasoning from principle and applying it to to the whole world. You know, the Bible talks about a time of trouble this world has never seen, and the whole world is caught in to this into this conflict. And and there's no place that you can run away from from Satan and his kingdom because the whole world is wandering after the beast. These are worldwide concepts. So if if you're just if you're if you're putting it into local literal terms, well then you're missing the point. I mean, if Islam's the king of the south, and I'm fine. I live in the United States, so Islam's way over there, and I'm here, I'm fine. Oh, king of the north is Turkey. Good. I'm, I live in New York, so I don't have any problem with the king of the north or the king of the south. I'm ready for Jesus to come, so, you know, we're okay. Well, then, no, that's not what the Bible is teaching. I know I'm, I'm making it sound silly, but, you know, to me, that's what it sounds silly. It's It sounds like we're going backwards instead of going forwards. And I've been sharing these things, trying to share these things for years, and it seems, it seems that um, the long, the long, the closer we get to the end, more the more crazy ideas I, I hear, and the more those crazy ideas start to be accepted, and it just baffles me. So anyway, oh, I should have stopped recording a long time ago, Don. I'm sorry, I didn't need to. But that's why I'm encouraging you to read the book of Revelation. And then and then if you if you read it, if you read it as a book, you'll start seeing you'll start seeing these patterns. You know, you can see the right hand mentioned and you see where it's mentioned and where it stops and then where it's not mentioned after anymore. Or you can you can start seeing these symbols and, and how they're they they're the pattern that they that they're they, as they as they're sprinkled through the book of Revelation, how it's actually describing a pattern. And then you start seeing once you start seeing this pattern and you see it over and over again, then you start realizing there's no way that this pattern that keeps emerging can be wrong because you're you're showing it from 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 multiple different pl uh, places and multiple different symbols. And then you begin to realize that the book of Revelation is actually explaining itself in ways that cannot, cannot be denied. So anyways, thank you for your patience with me. Thank you for explaining. May you shall run to and fro and knowledge will increase. <laughs> True. Well, some of these things I've been wrestling with for for many years. And uh I just I just started, as I told you before, just like this. It's the first time I've ever really publicly taught on the book of Revelation because I just didn't believe that people were ready to hear what I had to say. Um but I believe that it's time and so I'm stepping out. The same thing with trying to write what I'm writing in, in, in the books that I'm trying to write. I believe that it's time and I'm trying to step out. But, um, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of years trying to study. And these questions that are being asked, you know, I've asked myself these things and tried to study them out. And I, there was no one around to help me. I didn't have anybody to talk to. I was trying to figure these things out on my own. And everybody else, everybody was telling me that I was nuts. <coughs> And I would have to have, you know, that's where I came up with the phrase. I'm going to say, well, you're out of your mind. I said, yeah, I know. I'm out of, I am want I want to be out of my mind. I want the mind of Christ. Amen. <laughs> so, and it didn't bother me. I mean, it did bother me, especially at first, because I, I, like I said, I thought people would get excited when you start sharing about Jesus becoming king and, and, and the glorious idea of him becoming king. And when people are just looking at me with frowns about Jesus becoming king, it's like, Oh, aren't you interested in Jesus coming? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, doesn't Jesus come as king? Well, yeah, but he's already king. So, you know, and then then they would just dismiss everything that, that I was trying to say. So, but anyway. So thank you for being patient with me. No problem. Oh, so we're here for. The patience of the saints, right? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> So so next week what we'll do is uh 
we'll we'll actually read Revelation chapter one, then we can answer any questions. There's a couple of things I want to show you threads through Revelation uh, on different symbols that are in Revelation chapter one. But we can we can kind of finish up. I don't know we'll ever finish Revelation one, but the the idea of finishing it so that we can move on to the seven churches. And then I'll start dealing with, we'll start dealing with the seven churches. Okay. So that's kind of the plan. So if you're reading um, and you have questions, just write them down. And by the way, if you see stuff, just write it down, share it. Because I'm sure you, you know, if you're studying Revelation, you'll see things that nobody else has ever seen. It's time for it to be revealed. And uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, sounding your ideas off from other people.